man, that was great. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm pumped up from that uh, from that little jam. I like yeah, you make, you're mixing it up on the intros. To get, us, uh, get us going. That's my early morning coffee intros. I sit yes. down, I make, I work on them. Yeah, you, get, you got you know what the thing is, and totally on topic. But first of all, thank you again for everyone's coming in the show today. But yeah. I, I think it's good that everyone, especially even in today's talk in tech, is to is to have a creative outlet. Got to have a creative outlet. It's painting or creating things or doing something that's in the arts, I think is good for a business. So anyways, I'll, I'll give it over to you, Chris. Here's my two cents. Buddy. Absolutely. No, I know for sure. Absolutely agree. I mean, this, this is your creative outlet, Jay. I mean, we were working on the, you know, the Cisco Advantage partnership and then you're creating, you know, you built your creative outlet right into your job as well, which I don't know if it's recommended because now you're, you know, you're rocking uh, two roles, but it's, um, you know, I'm definitely happy with, uh, with the outcome. So I, I love the fact that your dog just stepped into the too. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's Makita. If you plan that or not. Oh, I got yeah, super trained yeah, to come in. Yeah, every time, actually, yeah, every time I jump on a video stream, my dogs just show up and start whining or, or you know, barking. So, it's years of practice. Um, awesome. But, well, take this right. show, Chris. Please do. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so, welcome to the season finale of the Restaurant Tech Show, brought to you by the Cisco Virtual Kitchen Network. Uh, well, this may be our last show of the season. We'll be back in the fall to introduce you to more great tech solutions and leaders. Uh, I'm Chris, this is Jay, and as you guys probably know by now, we're going to be the ones breaking down the uh, the latest and greatest in tech. Um, so we've got a great show lined up for you today where we get to talk with Solink, where they are one of the leaders in video analytics and insights. Um, we're going to discuss the value of video, how you can gain actionable insights, um, you know, that you can actually get on the, on the daily. So we're going to really help educate people on using a tool that they've had all along. And uh, we're really excited. So today we're actually joined by the VP of Sales and Partnerships from Solink, Jim Farrell. Uh, welcome to the show, Jim. Hey, I'm really happy to be here. Thanks for uh, for inviting me on. Yeah, I appreciate you. Uh, you know, appreciate you coming on. I'm really excited to see the you know the demo that you guys have lined up for us. There's actually a fantastic deal that they put on exclusively for yeah, the uh, thank you, Jim, for that. Cisco. Uh, you know, the Cisco network. So we're going to talk about that at the end of the show. So don't go anywhere. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think. You know, we're definitely going to talk about some of the some of the more recent trends in restaurants. Um, you know, find out what people have been you know praising or you know condemning, just as everybody's returning to a full busy summer. Um, so I'd love to you know get started, talk about some of the some of the different trends. Jay, I don't know if you had anything that you wanted to talk about specifically, but because uh, you know, you're the one who's actually probably you know traveling the most, but. Uh, well, there's so there's a lot of things out there, and I think there's a lot of. First of all, thank you, Jim, first to be on the show. Uh, I'm in Calgary today doing some shoots down here and different things that we're having in Calgary, and it's a, it's first of all, it's absolutely awesome to see restaurants getting back into the groove, and we're kind of celebrating them right now and just having a great time here in Calgary. But I do want to also just mention um, that I think first of all, Chris, thanks again for also giving us this show. And allowing us to see tech from your perspective, because I think you're one of the smartest guys in the industry uh, when it comes if, well, I don't know about our late night talks, but um, it's, it's amazing what you bring. And so thank you so much, first of all, for introducing us and getting us the first, like, I, don't, I have to say you're probably the only restaurant tech show in Canada or North America. Um, so thank you again for that and being able to provide us with amazing people like Jim today. And, and I think that's huge when we start looking at this because we were at a show recently, me and Chris were there, and uh, uh, or Chris and myself, I guess, and he's proper English today, um, is it was like tech, plant-based was like the two main things. Everyone had it. Um, and I definitely think the space is going to continue to grow. Visiting customers more and more recently out in the field, you see it everywhere. Tech is everywhere. And the, even the POS system that's in the restaurant, I was downstairs here, uh, hanging out with um, the, the the tech they're using is so advanced, you know, and that I've seen the last five years even, and uh, it's amazing. So thank you again mm-hmm. for as a show, Chris, doing these amazing things, bringing us amazing guests like Jim today, and just really open our eyes to this because it is a scary space for restaurateurs to sometimes dab you know dabble into or go to and be a part of. But you're making it simpler and you're making it easier and. Frankly, maybe a little bit of fun too. 
All right, well, we try to have a little bit of fun. And I don't know, you didn't even mention I finally have my beautiful foodie swag. I was just saying, nice swag, buddy. Fantastic swag. I mean, I've been, I've actually been asked multiple times by people, like, where did you get this shirt? I literally gave one of these, like, I had the shirt, gave it, you know, the shirt off my back to one of our partners when we were walking around the office because, uh, <laughs> you know, we were all, we all wanted it. So, you know, uh, you've done a fantastic job with the show, the network. Really excited to, uh, you know, to keep seeing how it evolves and, uh, you know, I would love to see the, the next season of swag. So uh, let's jump into it, though. I think one of the things you kind of mentioned it, everything's becoming so advanced. I mean, automation is definitely one of those topics that, you know, restaurants, they want to learn. How do we automate things? You know, how do we you know, remove friction, automate processes, make training easier, you know, alleviate, um, you know, those manual steps for staff? Um, you know, Jim, what have you seen out there uh, on the, kind of the automation front that, uh, that's kind of impressing you these days? Well, I think it's 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 not even just the the what's impressing me. It's almost what's what's kind of concerning too, right? It's there's so much cool tech, and there's so many companies that are able to help restaurants solve these challenges, but it all kind of ends up kind of niche categorized, right? So mm -hmm. um, the automation ends up then siloed uh, versus across the business, across the entire customer experience, the journey, the journey for the employees, even like how they are seeing this as a job, a career jump off spot or a career as a whole and these types of things. And so you end up with a lot of clutter and confusion as well. And mm -hmm. so the automation is great. And the, the niche components, like when a POS does automation really well, or, or again, like any, any little piece of the pie can, can actually help you automate things. But what I'm seeing is also just there's a lot more tech in the restaurant and it's all not talking to each other. So you have right. sort of this, this kind of new problem of, you know, um, and, and we've talked about this with other, you know, restaurant technology groups. And, you know, I was at Murtech talking about this a lot um, back a few months ago. And this idea of like the open architecture, right? The open APIs, letting all these systems talk to each other versus putting the restaurants in the middle of the tech ball of wires, essentially, and saying, you know, you're going to have to make all this stuff talk to, to each other. Um, you know, as us as vendors, you know, being able to be very open with the technology and having it connect, I think is the next thing that needs to happen out of this uh, wave of innovation that, you know, fueled by COVID a little bit, all the companies turned back into their labs and said, we're going to help restaurants with new problems. But now that's creating a, a different kind of problem around open integration and these systems talking to each other to truly get that automation um, on rails, as you might say, um, <laughs> get, yeah. get rid of the, the friction that, that's in there. Was, That's what coding, was that a coding joke in there? A little bit of a... There's a little bit of a coding joke in there. Nice, yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we are the tech show, them. so this is where you got to make those jokes. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, it's great to hear. And I mean, you kind of nailed it, right? Like, there's so many great tools out there. And I kind of, what I've noticed, and I mean, we've both been, you know, working in the same industry for a while. You see that there goes, I feel there's periods of like, companies will kind of expand all their feature sets. And then, so one company can do a lot where they'll, everything will talk to each other, but then you know, it creates opportunity for other companies to come out and do one of those things really, really, really well. So then all these companies span up, uh, you know, they drive the technology forward, but then you run into this situation where now they're siloed again and we need to start, you know, we don't necessarily, they don't need to be say, um, you know, acquired all by one company, but yeah, they, they need to communicate. So what would be something you would, what's some advice you would give restaurants when approaching these types of technologies as far as, you know, what do they look out for or, um, you know, how are they able to kind of jump in without, you know, completely understanding how everything's going to work together? Well, I, th I think one of the things that restaurants need to do now, um, and, it, and it, you know, I, I have a background in, in cloud and, and the, you know, we, I did utility computing before we called it cloud. Um, thank you, Microsoft, for giving us a better name for it. But, um, you know, and, and at the end of the day, it was this, okay, you need to know what you have in the building um, in order to figure out what you're going to do with it next, right? So, I think restaurants can kind of follow that from other, you know, kind of more office-based businesses that kind of moved into the cloud um, years ago. The restaurants are moving into a lot of cloud technologies and things like that. And part of it is knowing what your, you know, again, another kind of nerdy word, but like your stack is, right? What is your tech stack? What technology do you have? What versions are you on? Um, these types of things. Are you paying for the integration capabilities? Do you even know if those exist with your system so i think when you're selecting like a pos system as an example because a lot of you know a lot of the business converges into that system you know knowing what versions you're on knowing what the options are knowing if there's an add-on for reporting knowing if there's an add-on for api access just getting a little bit more sophisticated um as you know a tech 
company that makes great food and serves a great yeah. experience to your customers, you got to start thinking. And there's some great brands that do this today that are, you know, largely tech companies who make great food. And I, you know, I won't drop any names, but there's some some clear staples in the industry. Um, and that's that's kind of the way they run it, right? Is understand your stack, understand your security, what's coming in and out of your building as far as technology. Where's your data going? Um, yeah. Just a little bit of literacy in that. Um, just the same way you would get literacy in like, you know, um, your finances and stuff. This is another really important component of what's going to make you money or or hurt your business uh, long term. So um, finding vendors that focus on the customer's knowledge and literacy and not just try to hawk products. Um, you know, yeah. so does that for sure. We focus on education as part of our process, but um, finding those partners or finding great shows and great groups like this and working with great companies um, like Cisco and, and App8 and finding these these kind of common uh, friendlies to help you, you know, evolve your business can be kind of a fast track to that, right? Trust, trust some of the vendors. Yeah. They're not all just trying to, you know, make the almighty dollar. Most of us are quite passionate about the restaurant business and about our customers and making them successful. Cause that's how generally we make more money is when our customers are wildly successful. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, it all, it all comes down to the dollar, but that's a, that's the best tip I can give people is just really understand your stack and, and understand yeah. what's available to you when you're buying something or what you have today and what, what it offers. So it seems like, yeah, to kind of sum that up too, it means, you know, look for companies that maybe you don't need all the features or you don't need all the services right away, but if they have an open architecture that can connect to different companies like, you know, Solink, like AppBait or anybody else, um, then you can obviously, you're preparing for the future. Um, you can look for very specific tech in your industry. Uh, so make sure it's something that they specialize in because there's so many great solutions out there. Um, and then, you know, yeah, you said like talk to vendors, like a lot of these restaurants have a, have an integrated, uh, you know, an integrated they talk to or, you know, their tech provider who's been talking to companies like ours. So there's kind of three easy ways that people can kind of jump in without, um, you know, being too worried about investing in something that's not going to be you know, future proofed. So, Chris, would you also recommend just like references from other restaurants? Oh, I mean, that's the that's the number one. Right. And it's funny because I think in every city, in every area, there's always one or two restaurants, whether it's the restaurants or the owners that are kind of leading the way. And, um, you know, you can kind of look to them to see what companies are they working with, what solutions are they using? And, you know, that's, you know, um, I think everybody in that industry, they love to give those references. Everybody likes to be the first one. So if they figured out something really cool um, and, you know, it's maybe not something and something that they're they're open to sharing, then they're definitely looking to do that. So, um, yeah, you can definitely look for those leaders in your communities and see what they're working with for sure. Um, yeah. So another one, I think another one, this is another theme that, you know, I've definitely been, you know, pitching this season, but uh, there's a lot of stuff that a lot of, a lot uh, more that can be done with it. But I feel like, so timing and transparency are two of the big topics that I think uh, uh, restaurants are going to, are going to be big with restaurants because you know, everybody in the pandemic, the timing and transparency was like right there for them with every order that they made. Um, you know, they had, you know, they placed their order through a you know, third party or online ordering and they would get you know, notified to say, hey, your order's been ready. It's getting prepared. We've got a driver going to pick up your, your order. This is, you know, this driver's name is Steve. He's got three kids, enjoys golfing and he's like, you know, five minutes away. So now that people are going back to restaurants, you know, what are the, there's definitely, um, you know, tools and systems that can be used uh, to help with this timing transparency to help your guests feel you know, that they have a little bit more of that control. So, I mean, Jim, you talked about some stuff around like, you know, bump bars, kitchen display, looking at downtime, you know, analytics to speed up, you know, kitchens. So like what's, uh, what are some of the timing and transparency tools or methods that, you know, you've seen that uh, restaurants should consider right now? Yeah. And I mean, it, it, it ties to that idea of wanting, um, you know, open architectures and integrations and things like that is, is timing is also a thing that can be siloed, but, but you're right. I mean, my, my son's, favorite joke is is about uh, the the uh, the delivery guy driving the Zamboni during hockey playoffs like is the Zamboni <laughs> actually driving down this road and, you know there's an expectation but there's also like a generational thing that's happening here um, and even you know I took my, my son to a, an actual physical restaurant like we've been to restaurants but an actual like quick service restaurant um, on Monday we were just we were doing some errands we were shopping and um, you know, he said, he said some funny things to me. He's, he's 11. He's, he's a kind of a, a bit of a funny kid. Um, but you know, because he's had two really kind of important years of his life and you think of like nine, 10 years old in a pandemic and the way we ordered food and all that stuff and kind of all, you know, work to survive that, that, that horrible process. Um, you know, he's going, you know, so, well, so do we order and then go home and meet the guy and going, but we could just 
we could <laughs> actually it's it's quick service there's a drive through we can do we have three options here yeah we could go home but that's weird because we're already here we could drive through he's like okay well yeah drive through i remember that yeah you could drive through i'm like i'm like but we should actually go in the store we should go in this restaurant and remember what that experience is like and and even myself i try not to eat as much uh quick service but some of it's just too damn good I'll, I'll i'll be honest so you know there was something we wanted um we're both we're both vegetarians so it was a plant-based option at this particular restaurant that's one of the best plant-based options i don't know what i'm allowed to name drop here but um it has the word possible <laughs> in it and uh, we went in to get some of those and uh and just the experience of him looking a, a, a young woman in the eye and ordering his food from her directly and the kind of his eyes almost got big right with just this this random experience that he was having and so i was really kind of soaking it in as somebody who cares about restaurants and and watching everything happening in the store what are the other patrons doing what's happening in the back what is the what are the what's the kitchen doing right and i can hear a little argument in the back um about our order um and all it was was them saying like look the, what you're ordering doesn't get ordered very often so it's going to take a little while but the the woman came back and told us that it's going to take a little while and you know it's fast food you you want it quick but my son's going like, okay, well, that's fine. Cause normally we wait 15 minutes. You gotta <laughs> wait a couple minutes. It's going to be fine. So now he's realizing it's faster to get your food. Then the food comes out piping hot. Then he sees an advertisement for a $1 soft serve cone says, Oh, can we get those? And I said, yeah, we can get them after because we're here. Right. Mm -hmm. And the whole process took like, again, it was like two minutes. It was the, yeah. the dream <laughs> speed, even with a warning that it may take a little longer. And then we're there. And because we had a good experience, we sit down, we're kind of soaking the moment. We have the time to do it. We're not in a rush. Lots of advertising around us that we would normally ignore on our devices is sitting in front of us and we can't ignore it. It's part of the wall. It's part of what's hanging off the ceilings. And he starts, you know, being interested in other food. That soft serve ice cream is calling our name when we're done. We go back, we can make a secondary purchase, which is probably a high margin item from that restaurant. We have a very enjoyable experience and, and we talk about it when we get home uh, with mom and, and my daughter. Um, and now they're, you know, they want their own little moment like that. So that, 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 that's something we can all do is bring our, our children back to the restaurants because there's a generation that's going to forget what that's like. Um, but watching, you know, an 11 year old have this great experience reminded me that all the speed and all the automation and all these things are great, but there's an experience component that we can't lose. Yeah. And it's not an online experience. It's an in-person experience. It's a human experience um, that I think that that's the thing is to manage that with automation. People are used to this stuff, but if I can order at my table and sit down, right, and have that ability to kind of blend the two worlds, that's going to help this transition back, right, at the end of the day. But it helps the restaurants also with speed, with automation, with transparency, like you said. And I think that that little experience I had actually this Monday, you know, kind of culminated for a lot of ideas and thoughts I've had. You spend time with restaurants, but actually being, um, you know, a guest of a restaurant and soaking the experience was kind of interesting on on just watching them do their bump timer in the back. Like yeah. you said, there's a speed. They know how long it's going to take to get that item from frozen to, to you know, to hot and piping into, into my mouth kind of thing. Um, and they know what the speeds are. And they were able to actually articulate that to me the same way an app could. But if there was mm -hmm. that much more where I'm sitting at my table and I'm able to, you know, do that in a more full service manner and kind of blend those experiences when I have a, a waitress or a waiter, um, a server doing that stuff. I think that there's there's this how do we leverage the technology to create the bridge almost back into that in-person hospitality experience? Well, that's that, yeah, that's it. Using, right. You kind of nailed it. I mean, um, you had a, good, a couple of great topics. I mean, you're talking about one of the masters when it comes to, you know, upselling and you know, speed of service. You know, you look at, you know, brands like Burger King. It's the, it's the reason why there's, you know, thousands of them. And uh, but, you know, you kind of nailed the upselling. Like, you know, you probably wouldn't order that ice cream if it was coming home because it would have been melted before it got there or it would have been something you had to eat first. Uh, you know, so there was an upselling opportunity because you're in the restaurant. They made sure to communicate to you that it's going to take a while because I actually think hospitality was like a nice to have during the pandemic is like, you know, they just wanted it to work. They wanted it to be safe and they wanted to make sure they could fill all these orders. So hospitality kind of took a back seat. So yeah. as we're returning, you talk about a bridge. It's like, yeah, so make sure that hospitality is you know, front and center, because now we're competing against people's thumbs and sitting at home. Like, why would they come in to, uh, you know, the restaurant unless there's that hospitality component or something unique? So uh, that's really, really good. Uh, really good topic. Uh, great points. And we're going to, so we're going to, we're going to take a short break. 
Um, you know, look at a commercial from one of our great sponsors with Cisco. Uh, we come back, we're going to learn a little bit more about Jim's experience and the, the Solink story and how we can uh, incorporate more video insights into your restaurant operations. Ready Grilled from Trident Seafoods. Great chefs know few foods are as delicious as grilled fish, lightly seasoned to perfection. A healthy, low-fat, low-carb option packed with protein. It's no surprise the demand for seafood continues to grow. Trident Seafoods helps meet this demand with our Ready Grilled line of products. Fully cooked, fire grilled, and ready to serve, we help you cut down on prep time and ensure quality and safety. Heat from frozen or thaw first. Boil in the pouch or microwave in minutes, or remove the pouch and thaw overnight. Portions last up to five days refrigerated. Our Ready Grilled line can be served hot or cold and meets all food safety requirements for ready to eat. Each portion is individually packaged to reduce waste and maintain consistent quality. A variety of species and portion sizes means a variety of options for hot or cold recipes. Wild Alaska Pollock, Wild Alaska Salmon, or Wild Alaska Sockeye Salmon. Each offer unique value and flavor choices. Email, call, or visit us at tridentseafoods.com today. Man, did they, uh, I don't know if you're uh, you know, uh, a pescatarian there, Jim, if you eat fish, but uh, I feel like they might have just queued that one up for you. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a pescatarian now. Yeah. Uh, and, and I try to keep the, the vegetarian mode, but uh, I'm definitely eating fish every once in a while. And that definitely nice. made me hungry. It looked really good. Yeah, I love how there's a funny joke I saw on a show where they, they were going to an event and, you know, this person wanted to order a special plate to make to like, you know, embiggen himself and make him look special in front of all the other people. Um, I think it was a show startup where he said he's a pesca pescatarian where he only eats fish that eat other fish. <laughs> Um, yeah. All right. So yeah, Jim, give us a little, give us a little bit of your background like what you got in, what got you into this space and, you know, maybe introduce Solink before we jump into some of the kind of finer points of the, the solution you guys deliver. Yeah. Like my background, you know, in kind of summary is I've, uh, for last 20 years, I've been working for, for technology companies and, and trying to bring, um, sort of a, a humanity to, to tech companies and things like that. I, I tend to believe that serving the customers and, and caring about people as people and treating people as people and showing them, you know, them, I, you know, I stole a line from somebody along the way, show me, you know, me mm -hmm. um, and, and that kind of stuff. And it just always sticks with me on, on that. So I look for, you know, areas where we're really protecting um, companies and customers. It's kind of a natural uh, thing that, that I, that I kind of gravitate towards. So I spent a lot of time in like compliance and, and, you know, the, the idea of protecting from lawsuits, protecting from the government that that's trying to, you know, uh, look at your business and fine you and stuff like that, as well as protecting, um, you know, citizens from, you know, having bad, whatever, uh, there's lots of different industries I've served in from materials compliance to, um, you know, uh, data compliance and this type of thing. And so security was a natural kind of place for me to look in that idea of, again, protecting um, both the companies and the people that they serve. And, and, you know, physical security from a, a video security system, CCTV surveillance, um, it can feel big brother. But really what, what you know, I observed at five years at Solink is um, we catch bad guys. Um, there are bad guys out in the world. There's a lot of them um, actually in post pandemic and during the pandemic, they, they kind of came out of the woodworks quite a bit and, and really affected a lot of our restaurant customers that we want to make sure that they get, you know, they get what's coming to them if they're walking in and assaulting, um, you know, employees who are just trying to make a buck and, mm -hmm. and take care of customers and things like that. So there's a bit of that kind of protecting the, the, the livelihoods of our customers by making sure that people aren't stealing from them or, or abusing their, their building or abusing their people or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And then there's the idea of protecting the people that, that work there and that, that, that come there to have great food um, and protecting the overall revenue. So these restaurants can survive, especially when, you know, something very serious like a pandemic hits. Um, so we've done those things at Solink. Solink, you know, um, invests in our customers. We invest in the charities that they care about. We invest in the communities that they care about. We've done great campaigns to, to raise, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars for, for different charities that are partnered uh, with brands that we partner with. Um, and some, you know, most of the, you know, quick service market is partnered with Solink at some level. Um, full service, you know, fine dining, fast casual. We have lots of customers in all spaces of restaurants. And so, yeah, Solink's mission is to really protect the livelihood 
um, the people and the and the the property that that is involved in running a restaurant and making sure that we can really make sure those penny profits, especially when they're happening, you know, don't don't disappear with all this innovation and automation and delivery. You know, there's there's this need to create margin uh, for these businesses to survive and thrive and and bring us more great food and more great experiences. So, so that's what Solink's kind of mission is, is to, is to really focus on that, making these businesses successful versus, you know, just catching bad guys. And by yeah. doing both of these, we can kind of achieve that. Well, I think, um, you know, being pretty familiar with Solink, I think one of the one of the things that, you know, always kind of you know blew my mind was that you had this some, something you'd invest thousands of dollars in that sat in your restaurant that was more of an insurance policy for if someone breaks in or someone gets hurt or something happens that you have this. But it was always just like a nice to have or something you would just set and forget. Yeah. Um, you know, by you talk about linking all these systems together, mm -hmm. communicating like, you know, just by, you know, video being this, this is big unstructured source of data that you can't just, you know, search for something unless you have another form of data, which, you know, you guys have, um, you know, linked to those point of sale systems as well as some other systems in the restaurants that allows you to very quickly jump into a transaction. And I love that, um, you know, you talk about QSRs, well, most, most owners own multiple locations, so they can't be everywhere at once, but they can flip their phone open whenever they need to check on something. Oh, did they put out that POP display? Um, you know, is, uh, oh, I got an alert about something, you know, maybe I should check into that one store because they need to prioritize their time. And, and the last thing they want to do is find out about something that happened in the morning when now they got to drive across town or drive to another city. So yeah, you guys have really brought, you know, video to the forefront of helping people better understand all, not only, um, you know, what's happening by looking at it, but better understand the data points that they're getting from all their other systems. So like, what's one of the, I mean, maybe it was one of the surprises or one of the most misunderstood things about security video where you guys can really help out outside of just, you know, the exception based reporting or just motion alerts. Like what are some of the really cool um, features you guys have uh, opened up uh, for restaurants? Yeah, I think they, they, the surprise that happens for our customers is, you know, I never thought, and I have like quotes from this, we have a, a customer success Slack channel and, and we, we capture the best moments that our customers have their, their kind of aha moment, right? And I think the, 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 the quote that I, I saw last week was, I didn't think my camera system would save or make me this much money. Um, because you're thinking of this thing as this insurance policy that you have, that if you're going to have to use it, it's going to probably be a painful experience because you're going to set it and forget it. And then one day you're going to need it. And that idea that the, it's just this commodity thing that you have to have for in your own insurance rates or something like that, or to deal with police, your cameras see everything that happened in your business. All those new technologies that you have generally ideally are very cloud-based and they have open APIs and Solink will pull all that data in, you know, from your point of sale system is one of the most common ones, but then also your delivery systems your bump bars, your inventory systems, your labor systems, you know, some great labor systems that come out of Canada. Um, again, I'm not sure how much name dropping. I'm yeah, yeah, you're more than welcome to talk about some yeah. of the companies you guys are yeah. working with. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, and representing Canada. Right. So, uh, so yeah. some Canadian companies we work with like Amigo and seven shifts from a labor perspective, mm -hmm. you know, they're doing great, great things to make the labor experience better and, and the, and the, and the uh, people's experience better, but we can take in that data and tie it all together because the video sees all those little moments. The sensors, mm. the apps, the pads, the, all the things that get, you know, the technology of, you know, the delivery of food from, you know, from a fridge or a freezer to a plate kind of thing. There's a lot of tech that happens in between often um, and yeah. being able to connect all that and then pair it with the video so you can verify when something looks off. Like you said, when I have, you know, a sale that's really large or a bunch of gift cards being purchased or something's taking too long. Uh, we yeah. have a bottleneck in our system. How many people do we have in the kitchen right now? Can video actually use AI to say that there are two people when there should be four? And that is going to definitely bottleneck your service. Mm -hmm. And then you know that potentially you have either a short staff or you have two people that are stuck in the back dealing with something else that's going yeah. wrong. And well, now you guys can do that now. You guys can detect and you know, make sure you have three chefs on during your busy hours and all that. Yeah, we're working on different kinds of analytics, but being able to recognize people is one of the things we do. And then we actually pair that when you're not having people in the store to also tell you, when there is people that shouldn't be in your mm. location, yeah. um, in your location, which happens very often in restaurants where the staff actually can kind of come back after close, things like yeah. that. There could be yeah. damaged property. There's liability. So the video well, can even, all that together. You know, behind the restaurant, I know, and you talk about protecting, right? It's not only just, it's protecting, um, you know, the, the businesses that these, you know, a lot of families run these restaurants and these chains, right? So 
you guys are providing that extra peace of mind that they that they have the confidence that they, you know that their, their stores and restaurants are going to be okay. And you talk about protecting employees too. So I mean, I remember I know like you know behind the restaurant, that's where you know people are going out to put the trash out or they take deliveries in there. But that's usually not a very high traffic area. So just knowing that you have um, you know something there in case something does happen or somebody there are people back there that shouldn't be there. Um, but I mean, it even yeah. goes towards, you know, protecting some of your, you know, your assets in the, in the kitchen as well. I know, uh, one of my, fa- one of my favorite stories I heard a while back was like, you know, the, you know, high, high cost items like bacon, right. Um, you know, this person was going through bacon a lot. And then I think they really set up a motion detect- detection on their fridge. Just every time someone's going to the freezer or the fridge, and then there's a high amount of alerts going to the fridge and we're wondering what's going on. And then you can actually look at the freezer cam at those times and you see someone just going in there and eating pieces of bacon, you know, yeah. it's just like, that was the exception was why was someone going to the fridge so often? Um, and it's just like, those are little things, but you guys have gone way past that now, um, you know, you know yeah. to the level of video analytics that you can perform to also the different systems you can link into to provide, uh, you know, more, more insights. So um, you named like, uh, you know, you named quick service restaurants. I know you guys are work with, you know, great brands like Tim Hortons, um, you know, uh, as far as, uh, you know, quick service goes to Tim Hortons is a Chick-fil-A. Um, you can name a few other ones, but what other types of restaurants can benefit um, or even like, you know, anybody in the food service space that can benefit from, uh, from Solink? Yeah, I mean, like I said, we really do work with, if you look at like top 50 QSR, we probably have some installations and the integrations required for almost all of it, right? Mm-hmm. At this point, um, where we're approved, like a Tim Hortons or a Chick-fil-A is great. We love being an approved vendor, but security is, you know, usually an afterthought for the corporations yeah. and stuff. So we're working actually quite actively with many of the really leading brands on the corporate side to help us become a a kind of approved on network again, do the security stuff, make sure that's done right. Make sure the franchise operators can just buy something that's going to help them. And they don't have to go through all that, that kind of challenge that happens between franchise or and franchisee with that stuff. So yeah. maybe that other restaurants, I mean, for sure, like really any, any place that has bricks and mortar and service customers we can serve. Um, so we do yeah. a lot of retail stuff as well, but restaurant wise. Yeah. Any, any form of restaurant, the small mom and pop boutique, fine dining spot, um, you know, in South Boston to, um, something like, you know, a, a really heavy traffic multi-story bar from like a Let Us Entertain You in downtown Chicago, right? So mm-hmm. there's, there's um, you know, the Eiffel Tower restaurant, another great lettuce spot. If you've never been to the Eiffel Tower restaurant in Vegas at Paris Hotel, check that out. It's one of my favorite spots in Vegas. Little hidden gem, stuff like that. So that you have yeah. this protection even when you're making millions, you know, $10 million, $15 million a year. Um, you want to be able to make sure that your guests are getting the best experience, that the loyalty is working. Um, it's hard to do in finer dining to have loyalty because it kind of feels like more of a fast casual thing. But you can do a lot of damage to that. And there's great companies, again, Lettuce being one of our, our flagship customers in that space that's done just an amazing job yeah. with loyalty. You know, we've fantastic. Had- they have fantastic restaurants. Sorry, go ahead, Jay. Yeah. I was going to say, Jim, do, I have a question for you. Yeah. Does the employees have to sign off on anything within the video? Is there legal things or privacy laws or anything like that? Yeah, like, I mean, ultimately there are, right? Um, and we take privacy and security very, very seriously. And then if you um, look at what, you know, GDPR in, in the UK can in, in, in the European Union do and what California and other states and in Canada are doing, we want to protect all of us. Like, we're all citizens at the end of the day. We want to protect our privacy. So, yeah, when you work in a restaurant, part of it is um, part of your signing up as an employee is that, that the, the restaurant is being surveilled um, oh. because of the reason that it's a public place right and because it's a public place it also falls under interesting laws we always recommend talk to your lawyers about what you can and can't do because we can do things like pull audio and stuff and that's often used for training purposes again another i didn't realize my camera company my camera system can help me train my employees but if you can hear just the employee side of a drive-through audio you can help with upselling you can help with you know overall speed of service mm-hmm. you can help them learn the process you can what to say what not to say Make sure you, you spread out those promotions because they're really, really important to drive up the revenue, but also make sure the customers know about these great right. new products we have. So all that stuff is taken very seriously. Look into it. We'll advise where to look. We don't generally give legal advice because of obvious reasons. We don't want to be tied to the kind of legal advice there, but hmm. we do want to advise our customers not to ignore that stuff and that they should talk to lawyers. And there's definitely some and- stuff you would have signed by your employees that would cover that. Sure. Yeah. And you, and I know you guys also have those. I've, seen, I've definitely seen them all over the place now is you have the, you know, this site is monitored by Solink. So they know yeah. that when they walk, so even a customer walks in the door and the employees know, uh, man, one of my favorite little stories was um, uh, we talk about wearing the right uniforms. I remember working with one of the Tim Hortons, uh, local Tim Hortons guys, and he was, he, he didn't like wearing his hat. 
right? Just like taking his hat off, taking his hat off. So we used to, when we started working with the brand, we were saying how, you know, we were starting to do stuff like, yeah, well, we can, det- you know, detect like, you know, from the camera. So every time we would come into the, you know, and Solink would show up to Tim Hortons, this guy would like run and put his hat on. Like we were the ones policing the the uniform side and then we make jokes about, yeah, we're doing hat detection, you know, now or make sure people were in their uniforms properly, but all just in good fun. But we kind of became the, like, you know, the, oh, if we were around, the employees were like, oh no, we need to like make sure we're on track. But then the funny part was, well, technically we're looking at your security video all the time anyway, so we don't actually have to be here. That was part of the benefit. Um, so, we're going to take another short break uh, to check out one of the uh, another amazing Cisco sponsor. And then when we come back, Jim's going to uh, talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, Solink and how to get started with them. And he's going to go, he's going to show us what it actually looks like. And then we're going to talk to you guys about that amazing deal. Uh, so stay tuned and we'll be right back. I liked how upbeat it was. It, it, it's you know that that experience I had on Monday had a had a napkin component to it, right? You take the napkins away from the the gas because of yeah. COVID and all that stuff. Yeah. While the employees do the like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here you go. Here's a ball of napkins. <laughs> well, this thing's cost money. Like food and paper costs. Right. Yeah. The paper, there's a paper part. It costs so much, and that's one of the things you know we can definitely help with is reducing that food and paper cost, but mm. now Cisco does, does Cisco products. sells these, sells these products. So I, yeah, <laughs> I, you know, funny is it's funny, Jim, cause I always laugh is that you go to like a QSR restaurant and, and you know, there's a lot of young people and I, I worked in a QSR when I was a kid, but, and the, all these things happen. But I remember now as you go to like a drive through and they'll give you that like wad of uh, napkins. Cause they just <laughs> let it the stack. I actually got one yesterday. To be honest, I actually got a wad yesterday. At a, not even as a like fast casual, but um, I like literally the cost of what people make is that if you go to that stack, literally the profit that those most of those restaurants make of each dollar, you're literally throwing it away in the napkins. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like you literally just threw out the profit that you were going to make because they make so so little. Right. So, um, but yeah, the napkin thing, but. On that is that what you do and what you guys offer at Solink is that I like, first of all, I gotta, like, I don't do this too often, but is just really plug your plug what you do and what you, what you offer because Chris, another, another company I would put in my restaurant. My yeah. Right? yeah. Like it's, it's a no brainer. It's a no brainer to have this. And I think we need to, uh, we need everyone to know about Solink because this is brilliant. Yeah. Well, if it wasn't, yeah, if it wasn't clear by now, and I didn't exactly mention it, but I spent uh, you know about six years at Solink before the company that got me into restaurant tech, and uh, you know even after after leaving there, it's been a few years now, but I'm still you know still talking about them and still promoting them. And I mean, hell, I, I brought them you know brought them onto this show because I was like, hey, it's a great uh, you know great company. You guys need to talk to them, or I'd love to have them on the show to to talk with them. So, absolutely, and um, so yeah, like let's let's uh, yeah we. Need to, we're, we're here to plug great tech. We're here to talk tech. So let's talk about, um, you know, some of the cool features that people should look for, Jim. Talk about some of the plans that you guys can offer restaurants and then uh, yeah, and then show us what it looks like and then we'll, and we can wrap up with that great deal. Yeah, for sure. And and actually, you know, I'm glad you referenced our, our history together because I learned a lot of, of what I know now and what I leverage every day from you. So uh, I appreciate that. And thank All you. Right. Artist man in the industry, right? There. Hey, no, I, I still, uh, you know, I still, I still use a lot of your lines too, Jim. So I mean, it definitely goes both. <laughs> well, that, that, that's what's great about working with great people is we can all yeah. steal, uh, steal stuff from each other and, and make everybody stronger. You know, float all the boats together. So, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I definitely remember uh, 
you know, shotgun learning the demo from you in my second <laughs> job at a Tim Hortons convention in Vegas. And, and uh, so yeah. that's good. Oh, memory. yeah. This guy was this guy jumps on the booth. He flies down to Vegas his first week because we're at a big trade show. And he's we sit in a bar and talk about soling for a little while. And then, you know, the next day he's on the booth, you know, right on the edge of the carpet, right in the hallway, just, you know, spewing all the benefits of Solink, which, you know, it was, it was, it was fantastic. So we, you know, onboarded very fast, but, you know, a guy like you, Jim picks up the, not just features, right. But the benefits and, you know, the features we can talk about, but like you understood the, you know, you understood the benefits and you jumped right in and, you know, it's great to see. So, uh, yeah, tell us more about, you know, you've had, you've had a little bit more time than, you know, than one day to talk, to learn more about Solink. So like since then, you know, what are some of the really cool things that, you know, camera linking, I know I saw that on the site, that looks very cool. Can you talk about that? Yeah, like, I mean, we have so many great features and, and they're generally targeted at, you know, saving you time or saving your team time is, is really what it looks like. And that can be significant. I mean, we have surveyed results that come back that, you know, staff saying, you know, this is saving me 10 hours a week. You have a full-time manager. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jim, 10 hours. Sorry, I got to interrupt. That was rude. But yep. And no, hours. Hours yeah. that's, that's, at the, that's at the highest percentage answer. There were answers that were in the range of 20 hours, yeah. um, which is a lot, right? Because it's it's these little things that you, we talked about it actually, Chris, when we were kind of prepping for the show, the idea of how many steps it takes to go from front to back of house, right? And that kind of stuff and all these checks and you're running around looking for something and something happened and there's a customer complaint. We got to chase it down and all the, the panic that happens with the urgency that is in the business. And if you can whip out your phone, stay where you are, look the customer, like be with the customer to go, oh, do you have your receipt? I'll pull up that transaction for you to make sure that, you know, the car that bumped your car or, you know, did you actually get your coffee when you say you didn't? Did you actually pay with a $50 bill? The dispute resolution can be two minutes where it might have yeah. taken two hours. I've actually sat with somebody and watched them use their old system for hours to try to figure something out. And I'm sitting there going like, I have a better way. I have a better way. But yeah, they, the businesses are really busy. They're looking at the business with, with it yeah. that close to their face. So just taking a step back and realizing like you have full video of your whole building. I, the, the system can see all angles of your building outside, back of house, front of house, storage, inside your freezer. You don't have to open the door. You can just look and it'll tell you what's in your freezer. Um, having all that and then having the data tied to it so that you can search like a Google. Um, yeah. When was the last time we sold the X? You can search for X and it'll pull up the last transaction that had that. Or show me receipt number one, two, three, because I've got guest complaint. Mm -hmm. Those little moments dealing with the police, dealing with you know people having disputes with your employees or people having disputes with each other um, in the parking lot, you know, hit and runs, these types of things. These businesses kind of suffer through all this stuff and then you're going to spend hours and hours. It may not always be 10 hours a week, but I think what happens is the employees feel that there's a considerable amount of time savings. Yeah. It may not be exactly 10 hours, Jay, like it, it really may not. But if they feel like they're saving time, that what they're really saying is we feel productive um, and that we're not mm -hmm. wasting time. And that's I think uh -huh. that's the bigger point. The, uh, you know, like so many restaurants are unknown with the when you don't have anything to see out there, like. And you're putting, I always say this, you're putting in a lot of cases, you're putting younger people with no experience running a multi-million dollar operation and yeah. without eyes and ears. And they're mm -hmm. and most renter road restaurant owners or even corporate chefs or anything like that can't be. Well, first of all, they can't be there every day, like every hour. And they shouldn't be because they, they need time. Especially with mental illness and everything coming really strong into our industry right now because of the past last couple of years. Mm -hmm. I just read an article today about it uh, with Restaurant Canada, Restaurants Canada. So these things are all impacting. So we need to give our people a little time to go out there, re-energize, come back to the restaurant. It makes a better life, better career, better job. People are happy, everything else. So I see the benefit in multiple ways. But I, I, I have like a thousand horror stories. <laughs> what happens in restaurants without a camera sitting in there? Yeah, right? yeah. Just being able to know what's happening or like really bad horror stories. Yeah. But I, I'm like, oh boy, we're not gonna talk about them. But I do, I do think I do see like this being huge, and yeah. and it's mobile. You can watch on your phone, like, and you can. I I know a lot of restaurateurs that will go to like Mexico or go somewhere just for a break. And to have the ability to see what's happening and provide feedback oh, right away. Peace of mind is huge. It's, it's one of the biggest things they provide. 
Um, so Jim, if you want to bring up the demo, just so we can take a look at it before we before we wrap up. And I think one thing that a lot of restaurant tours and owners and a lot of GMs that they the mistake that I think no, it's not a mistake per se, but um, a lot of them just you know they don't value their own time properly. Like a Tim Hortons owner that runs multiple sites, like they used to be the one that would go site to site to site to look at local video versus just being able to like you know look remotely or offload tasks so you know you want to talk about time money saved like if you can save even a few hours a week you're paying for the cost of solink um at the end like i said owners uh, owners general managers they just they're so valuable their time's so valuable but sometimes it's if they just want to take care of something because they can it because it's easy they do that but you know using a, a product like solink will not only give them that peace of mind that will allow them to spend more of their value time on you know more important operational issues right so well you, the other thing too i think chris i just want to touch on this really quick because i'm just blown away by this again <laughs> just an amazing company i i do want to mention also just we have to you know i'm working with other organizations out there to rewrite the industry in a sense to be not the you know 80 hours a week lifestyle anymore mm -hmm. we need I know that's hard with a labor crunch. Don't don't get me wrong. I, I spent a week with a whole you know three hundred chefs last week. I get it. I just think that we need to not allow it to go back to those chaos days, where those number where we were seeing people get burnt out. There's burnout happening right now, and the ability to zoom in and I mean, you know what? It's there's multiple reasons why you wouldn't, wouldn't want to do this. Like I just blown away, but I just think for we need to rewrite the industry and why not use this yeah. system like this to help us do that. And, and also another thing, and I'm sorry, I'm all over the map here. It's what happens with me in Calgary with, with a decaf coffee uh, <laughs> is, you know, I worked with a, a fair kitchens and we work with a lot of organizations out there. I do. And it's really about providing a safe and, you know, diverse, safe, uh, we can throw that in there too, is a uh, kitchen where young chefs would go in and feel safe to work in a chef in, in, in that environment. And to, and I know a lot of people and I have met so many people that don't want to work in the kitchen because they don't feel safe. And mm -hmm. I know, that, I know it. And, and trust me, there's bull, there was a lot of bullying happening when I was in the kitchen. I've yeah. seen pots thrown by an 80 year old grandma at me. Like I have seen the bizarre stuff in the kitchen that wouldn't, you know, younger people mm -hmm. don't need that, right? So this prevents that as well. So yeah. there's multiple things I think you can dig out of the reasoning why you would do something like this. But um, I think it, it like I just keep going. Well, I would do this, that. It it <laughs> almost to a point, and I, I've heard some really crazy hiring practices lately because people are like uh, are using different tactics to drawing people for employment. Um, everywhere from someone doing laundry, having or no cleaning their house, um, uh, every twice a week, like restaurant or like uh, chefs are getting people coming in from the ownership to clean their house and stuff at home. So there's all these weird things. This could be a hiring bonus, like not bonus, but like a a draw in there to make people feel safe at work. Well, they can feel safe. They can feel, you know, feel safe they, if they're doing the right things all the time. Because a lot of times, you know, they'll just they'll just condemn the, the employees that are doing the wrong things. But this way, you can very you can actively say, hey, this employee, they're there on time. They're in the right places. They're doing all this great stuff, and we have records of it. Now, Jim was just quickly flipping through some features here, but I mean, what he just you know casually flipping through some of the most advanced video analytics and insights like it was nothing. Like I saw the camera linking where you could quickly yeah. jump between cameras when you're in an area. I saw the snapshots, which I love. You got the you got the overlay of the receipts live, that Jim? are searchable. Is that live right now. Uh, this I can get it live for sure. <laughs> yeah, I got a few friendly sites, but look at all these where you can jump to all the different camera links that are close by to get different views. So if people what are, are those walking between tags? cameras, what are those tags like those little tags? Or what are well, these tags are, are the other cameras? So all these cameras are connected in proximity. Yeah. So I have like you know some pickup areas here, but I can see what's happening with my drive-through order taker. You can literally the follow the bouncing yeah. ball as it goes through all yeah. the different cameras. Yeah. What's what's happening with my kitchen ovens? Where is the back kitchen oh, sink? Where are the people going from there? What's happening in my office at this time right now? Getting back to where my food is stored, my rear exit, yeah. exterior door, interior doors. 
just moving through the building. It's a, it's a pretty new feature. We released it a couple months ago. And um, again, when we say like 10 hours, like this saves people crazy amounts of time, even using our product. And one of the things we tend to do, we've got um, the best developers in the industry, especially in the video game. Um, they just find these little ways like it's well, instead of just going camera to camera, why don't I make it so you can just click like you're you're clicking a link on a website to get to another website. But then you have a backlink to the original website and seeing all the motion and all the things yeah. happen all the way to where the garbage comes, comes, comes out and making sure you've got a better shot of that. You, uh, you know, you mentioned creative outlets. So there's one thing I know about some of the developers at Solink, their creative outlet is just spending the weekend trying to build a brand new video analytic trigger that they thought about. I mean, wouldn't it be cool if like camera linking and I'm sure this is probably something that came out of that, you know, just, oh, this would be cool. And they spend the weekend just working yeah. on something as a fun project. So, you know, they really do have a great team there. Um, can you pull back up the the snapshots that have like the picture and the data and just show yeah. how you can yeah. filter out. Like the filtering system's amazing. Like you've got all these events happening, all the camera at the top that you can see, but then you can start to drill into specific reports. You've got motion transactions, um, you know, and all this data is searchable. So something that people like there's receipt overlay in a lot of video in the past, but it wasn't searchable. It was literally an image of the receipt overlaid on video. Every single line of a receipt and a transaction from payment type to what they ordered to you name it is searchable. So whether you're looking for a specific transaction because you saw someone came in and ordered this and they think there might have been theft to what products are we selling the most of? And hey, are we upselling that, you know, that extra little thing? Because you can search how many times did we sell this? And let's watch the upselling happen. And then boom, there's a training opportunity. There's a way to praise the employee that like actually upsold the extra, you know, whether it's wedges of Tim Hortons or something like that. Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, Chris. This is insane. So you yeah. tell me that when they're keying in an order, the video is recording them keying in the order? In is a that, sense, yeah, it depends yeah. on the point of sale system. We have lots of integrations, well over 200 integrations, most of which are, are restaurant point of sale systems. And uh, so if, if you use a POS system in the, in the restaurant space, we're probably already integrated. Um, and mm -hmm. some of them have the ability to do real-time keystroke. So as things are being entered and others, we'd have what, what I can kind of show you here. Um, it's a smaller order, but effectively I can see the different components of when the rewards is happening, when the double double is ordered, when the tax is being applied and that they're paying cash at this. Particular That's the moment. receipt right there. Yeah. yeah. This is the receipt right here. And the overlay. The receipt that that person is putting into the computer right there. Yep, exactly. And then you know, I can go and see what's happening at the other till. You know, it doesn't just work for drive through, right? I can actually go and see the same thing, you know, as it's happening. And obviously, you know, there are, you know, people who unfortunately, you know, good people do bad things. Sometimes cash theft happens. And it really, unfortunately, is about 52% of all cash theft we find is managers. Um, but what we get is this kind of empowering aspect of taking people and potentially rehabilitating them from that and them realizing that this is happening. Is also going to help them train their staff. They can kind of rehabilitate instead of fire when you have these things. Sometimes people just make mistakes. We use the video to kind of again train versus fire and rehire. That's a twelve thousand mm -hmm. dollar you know exercise that you know, nobody has time to do even. So you know just using this to kind of educate can really deter a lot of theft. And then really what you're trying to do is get the processes down, your SOP. You know everybody following what's supposed to happen, what corporate wants, what what we as owners want, what the manager wants, what the patrons want happening the way it's supposed to. And that, yeah. and that helps everybody, including these, the staff, make cool. sure they know what the expectation is. Cool. That is, ahead, Jay, yeah. I'm just blown away here that that's the receipt. Well, imagine this, Jay. So this is something that blows my mind too. So you talk about the more data you have on a point that you can access, yeah. the better context you get. So what they do with video is they really contextualize this, you know, this lot, you know, this text data where it's just like they ordered this, they ordered that. So like in a drive-through, speed of service is key. Like they, it's all about trying to get them as fast as possible. You might have a, you might have a situation where they can actually tell you how long it took from like order to completion. And you see like two events, you're saying, hey, we had these extreme events where this was like, you know, five minutes, this was five minutes, this was five minutes. Well, you can look into that and you might actually see, well, this was five minutes because it was a van full of kids coming from the hockey rink that all ordered all these different things. And then one of them ordered the, you know, chicken, you know, chicken that was ticked longer versus other five minute transactions that might have just been from employees, not, uh, you know, not moving quickly enough and not going through the steps. So you could look at all those events without video and think that they were the same thing. But once you jump into it and you actually see what happened, you just get way better insight and way better information. So, Jim, is there any talk with the government of making this mandatory for restaurants? 
No, and, and and frankly, we probably wouldn't. I think the restaurants get get a lot of told what to do, especially if you're in a franchise system. And, and there's reasons for that, and there's good reasons for that. But it's it's tough to be a restaurant operator with all these rules and regulations. I think having a security system is very much a best practice, and and the government in some jurisdictions requires you to have it if you're in something like a a very public space, like a mall or a mini mall. Yeah. Um, you know, those kind of along the highways, that type of place where, you know, basically there are there are crimes that get committed quite often. Um, so it's a good idea to have. I think wow. anybody who doesn't have it uh, for the cost of it. I mean, we're for an average restaurant we're you know, we're maybe at max a couple hundred dollars a month. But really, you know, you can get much lower than that, depending on the size of your restaurant, what you need, what you're integrated with. So we can be really cost effective way to kind of take your existing cameras, put them on steroids in a good way. Let them do things that they couldn't do before because we're integrated with your existing cameras, your existing point of sale system. You're putting this in and kind of leveling everything up that you have to have to protect people, your property, all that mm -hmm. stuff and help the police while also helping your business, your bottom line, your top line, improve speed of service, which increases revenue, improve speed of service without loss. That improves your bottom line. Make that margin fat again so you can go open more great restaurants and places that need to be served um, that are not getting yeah. Day because of the expansion slow that happened with COVID. So, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Chris, one more question. Yeah. Um, you were like, it's going to be a long one, Jay, because it's so good. And I was like, you're right. Uh, healthcare. Is there any talk about this being integrated into healthcare and senior homes? Long term care, yeah. Care? I mean, we definitely, I mean, we, we kind of don't turn anyone away at the door, right? We think that uh, video and security surveillance, that kind of stuff is is important for any business where there's, um, you know, people that are coming into a business um, and that, that that business is serving them. There's lots of hazards, right? There's slip, trip and fall and all that stuff. The same thing goes with any kind of nursing homes and anything like that. And because we can do things like, like a nursing home has sensors. So IOT, Internet of Things, right? Sensor data. Sensors create data points. Data points have timestamps. Timestamps can be married with video. So to be able to have, we had a case like that where, Somebody's got something monitoring a health component of, of an elderly person, monitoring their fridge and, and stove. The stove going on is a sensor that triggers a remote cloud system to say the stove is on. And video verification can go in by actually the, the, the children of this elderly person. They yeah. can have that alert hit their phone and be able to see that grandma probably shouldn't be cooking right now because she just took her medications. Maybe another sensor that told us that. So the the possibilities of what you can do by integrating data and sensor data, especially, as yeah. well as like system data, like a point of sale system or like an app eight or all these great products. Pairing that with video means that you're not just getting data that is noise, as, as Chris you know wisely says, right? It's actionable insight that you can actually go and verify immediately to potentially stop the bad thing from happening before it happens. Mm -hmm. Right. We're, we're using our, our video based alarms to catch bad guys burglarizing, you know, some great retailers in the U.S. who are getting attacked by by burglary because the police can't catch anybody. So they just keep stealing. We're actually catching yeah. people in store with a silent video alarm with the police coming in and putting these guys where they need to be, which is in jail. Right. For for burglary theft, sometimes letting them get just enough theft to make sure that they're they're prosecuted correctly. The video allows us to do that, and it also allows us to protect the police in those people in yeah. those situations as well, because they're walking around a blind corner. We can tell them if the guy has a gun, as an example. Oh my! God. Yeah, and that's in yeah, time, you do work, in real time, which is insane. In real time, yeah. Live yeah you guys video. work with some, uh, yeah, some financial institutions in the U.S. where that is where that is key. So, I mean, I think uh, you know to kind of sum this up. I mean, all the stuff we talked about. You know, do you want to improve your timing and transparency? Do you want to work with a system that's open that communicates with all the other systems in your business? you know, really help improve the automation and, uh, you know, go from being reactive, which is very much what security video is used for today to being proactive and just getting more out of that investment. So, um, you know, and to kind of wrap this up, if you are interested in trying out SoLink, which we highly recommend, um, we've got a really great deal for you. They put this together for us. So if you go to get solink.com slash SVK, fill out their form, um, you know, they're offering this deal for the, you know, the SVK network and Cisco subscribers. You're going to receive 50% off the first couple of months uh, when you sign up with, with SoLink. And I think by that time, you'll be able to you know, quickly see the value that they're going to provide for you. Um, you know, so thank you so much uh, for joining us today, Jim. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, it's, great to, it's great to get an update on what you guys have been working on. Obviously, you've continued to kind of keep pushing the leading edge there when it comes to video. 
and uh, really excited to see uh, what you guys uh, what you guys do next. So uh, thanks a lot for joining us, uh, Jay. Any final words? I just first of all, thanks, Chris, for this season, <laughs> season two <laughs> yeah. of the Tech Show. Uh, you bring amazing guests, and Jim, this has to be one of the best I've seen in a long time. So thank you so much for joining our show today and sharing this. I'm going to. I've got a list, a really long list of different clients and different customers out there and different people that I really want to connect you with because this is just so cool and I just love it. It's awesome. So I would, I'd put in my restaurant heartbeat. would be no questions asked. Well, we, we definitely appreciate the, the sentiments guys and, and the invite here. It's a, it's an honor. This is a great show. We're happy to be on the season finale. I think you guys will come <laughs> yeah. back in the fall and we'll be eager for those new shows, but uh, really, really appreciate you guys giving us this chance to try to help, you know, all of our friends in the restaurant game as much as we can to, uh, to, to get back on 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 that that kind of growth trajectory that uh, that they were all trying to do before the pandemic so really appreciate that yeah awesome. you know just to wrap up all the sentiment here for the season i mean also we want to you know plug back the other way to, to cisco as far as like you know you guys actually you know you're you're in the you're in the industries you know selling the food and different products they use in the restaurant but for you guys to actually go out of your way to build shows like this to build these types of programs that provide really valuable information to your restaurateurs to help them you know demystify all this tech and all these services um, to really help them you know become more successful and not get you know hoodwinked by just everybody trying to come through the door so what you guys have done here is fantastic I've had a lot of fun this season. I can't wait to do more. And, um, you know, if I'm, I may be on a couple more shows, but if uh, if not, I'm excited to see you guys again in the fall and uh, awesome. keep doing this. So well, thank you, everybody. Yeah. I forgot you're on our season fin our season finale show with, with Matt. So, and then you guys are getting the keys. Spoilers. Too. No. Yeah. Spoiler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we're going to be wrapping up the season next week, uh, doing a really good review of the SVK network, um, which is going to be great. So there's our promo plug right there. Uh, yeah, so you guys have the keys and you get to ask me questions, which I'm, you know, I'm very sure. excited. I'm, I'm going to work very hard on finding some good ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fantastic. All right, well, thank everybody for watching. Um, we will, you know, lots of great content to watch if you're still on the network, and uh, you know, we'll see you next time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Take care. Yeah.